Hello students, today we are just having an overview of the structures that are present in the posterior abdominal wall. You can see here, we have a good specimen here to show you all the structures what are there in the posterior abdominal wall. So you should understand here that all the in coils of intestine, the pancreas, the duodenum, everything we have removed. What we are seeing here is only the right and the left kidneys and the suprarenal glands. So shall we start now? So we'll just start from the midline. The first, the red colored one is the abdominal iota. In the center of the body, in the center of the plane, we have the abdominal iota. You can see here, it goes down and divides into right and left common iliac arteries. So the first structure of the posterior abdominal wall is abdominal iota dividing into right and left common iliac arteries. Now to the next of that, we can see a vein. You can make out this is vein because of its collapsible lumen. This is inferior vena cava. So to the right of the abdominal iota, we see the inferior vena cava. And going to the right side, next to the inferior vena cava, this is the right ureter, right ureter. Then we see some muscles here. Next are the muscles. First one, just medial or just to the right of the inferior vena cava, the first muscle here is the psoas major. Psoas major. Next to that, this is the quadratus lumborum. And the last one here, this is the transverse abdominus. So shall we see it once again? We have started from the midline and we, we are moving laterally. So in the midline, the first structure what was seen is the abdominal iota. To the right of that, we saw the inferior vena cava. Very next to that, we have the right ureter. Then comes the muscles. We have three muscles in the posterior abdominal wall. This is the psoas major, this one. Next is the quadratus lumborum. And what I'm holding here, this is the transverse abdominus. Now we have lot of nerves. If you see here, if I lift this kidney, you can make out there are lot of nerves that we can see here. All are in relation to this psoas major muscle. Now lateral to the psoas major, we see one thick nerve. This is the femoral nerve. Now above the femoral nerve, we see the next second nerve that is lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. So femoral nerve, just above that, this is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Then we can see much above that, we have two nerves here. This is a ilioinguinal nerve and iliohypogastric nerve. So ilioinguinal nerve is thinner and iliohypogastric is the thicker nerve and they come behind the kidney. If I keep place the kidney like this, these two nerves are the posterior relations of the kidney. Now I go medial to, medial to the psoas major. We see a nerve here, you can make out this nerve is the obturator nerve. This is the obturator nerve and on the psoas major, on the psoas major you see one thin nerve here, this one. There is a thin nerve here. This is genitofemoral nerve. This is called genitofemoral nerve. So we have many structures in the posterior abdominal wall. Each one is important. So starting from midline, this is abdominal iota. This is inferior vena cava. Next to that, we have the right ureter. Then comes our muscles, medial to lateral. First is psoas major. Then you have quadratus lumborum. Then we have the transverse abdominus. Then coming to the nerves in the posterior abdominal wall, the thickest nerve which is seen is the femoral nerve. Above that, we have the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Then I just lift the kidney. You can see two nerves, one thin one called ilioinguinal nerve and the thick one called iliohypogastric nerve. Now, if I go medial to this psoas major, I see the obturator nerve. And on the psoas major, we see the genitofemoral nerve. These are the main contents what we see in the posterior abdominal wall once we remove the intestines, the pancreas and the duodenum. Now, once we know the structures which are there in the posterior abdominal wall, let us have a quick view into the muscles which are present in the posterior abdominal wall. Now, starting from the middle, that is the median plane, going laterally, we have three muscles here. The medial most one is the psoas major, what I'm holding now and showing you. This is the psoas major muscle. And inferolateral to the psoas major, inferiorly and laterally, 
the small triangular muscle you can see here, this is iliacus. Above that, we see the quadratus lumborum muscle. This is a quadratus lumborum muscle and more laterally is the transverse abdominus. So, let us see once again from medial to lateral, the muscles are not of the same distance or same size. So, we have a very big muscle medially, this is the psoas major. Next to that, inferolateral to the psoas major, we have a small triangular muscle, this is iliacus. Just above that, we have another muscle that also lies lateral to the psoas major, this is quadratus lumborum and more laterally is the transverse abdominus. Now, if you see the psoas major, it is a quite big muscle going on either side of the vertebral column like this. The fibers, you can see it is running down inferolaterally. The fibers go behind the inguinal ligament and they reach the thigh to get inserted to the lesser trochanter of femur. So, this is our psoas major muscle here. Now, inferolateral to the psoas major, there is a small triangular muscle, this one. So, just now I told you, this muscle is called as iliacus. So, this is the iliac crust. This is a bony landmark called iliac crust. The muscle will come below the iliac crust. So, this is the iliacus muscle taking origin from the iliac fossa and most of the fibers of the psoas major and the iliacus are merged together. That means the iliacus muscle come and join with the tendon of psoas major. Now, once they join together, we call them as iliopsoas. They are mentioned as together in our books called iliopsoas. So, the minute I tell iliopsoas, I am including two muscles here. One is psoas major and one is iliacus. Both will run down to the thigh and they go to the lesser trochanter of femur. Now, why is this important for us? The iliopsoas muscle has got very important relations to the ureter. The ureters, if present the cecum, the appendix on the right side and the sigmoid colon on the left. So, they have an important relation with these organs. So, any inflammation of the ureters, the cecum, the appendix or the sigmoid colon, the patient will complain of pain while movement of iliopsoas. So, it is a very important test that we do in clinical side, the iliopsoas test for any pain. If the patient complains of any pain while movement of the iliopsoas, we can consider that there is some inflammation of the mentioned organs. So, the organs I mentioned was the ureter, the cecum, the appendix and also sigmoid colon on the left side. So, the first muscle what we saw was psoas major, inferolateral, below and lateral to the psoas major was our iliacus muscle, both are running together. So, since they are running together and joining together, it is called iliopsoas and they go to the lesser trochanter. Now, above the iliac crust, now above the iliac crust, this muscle is quadratus lumborum. The quadratus lumborum also arises from the lumbar vertebrae and they get inserted to the iliac crust. So, that means it is ending at the level of iliac crest. This is the iliac crest. So, this muscle lateral to the psoas major is quadratus lumborum.